Hello, Dark Realmers. Frankenstein's monster here, but you can call me Frankie. I've been asked by Michael J. Elliott to introduce this new series of videos, which are entitled The Legends of Horror, and we're starting today with my good friend Mr. Boris Karloff. Now, Boris and I are very close. In fact, we're almost inseparable. <laughs> but seriously, I owe a lot to Boris, and Michael J. Elliott has some fascinating facts for you about his life, his career, and the movies, and just a small part that I played in helping him get established. So, without further ado, let's get started, Dark Realmers. G'day Dark Realmers, it's horror author and illustrator Michael J. Elliott here with you again. Now, if this is your first time to the diaries, welcome! And if you want to keep up with the best in horror from movies, books, reviews, trivia, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you can keep up with everything that we do here at the diaries. Okay, Dark Realm as well. Today I'm starting a brand new series here on the diaries called The Legends of Horror. And what we'll be doing is taking a look at the most influential people in books and movies that have had a huge impact on the genre in um, both the written word and in movies. So we'll be looking at um, people like Edgar Allan Poe, um, Boris Karloff, Bella Lugosi, Vincent Price, Stephen King, Dean Koontz, just to name a few. But today, we're starting off with Boris Karloff. Now, he was born uh, William Pratt in uh, Camberwell in London in 1897. Now, later on, um, he was known to say that he chose the stage name, his first name, Boris, because it sounded very exotic and foreign. And then he said that his surname, Karlov, was actually a derivative of a family uh, ancestor name, Karlov, uh, from some of the Slavic regions of Europe. But later on, his daughter denied that the family had any Slavic um, roots at all. Now, when you think what a huge and successful career Boris Karloff had, um, it's amazing that he achieved so much because he was bow-legged, he had a stutter and a lisp. Now, he overcame his stutter, but his lisp remained with him for the, the rest of his career. And he basically um, became one of those voices that are instantly recognisable, just like Vincent Price, Bella Lugosi, and um, Peter Laurie too. Um, now, he left university in 1909 and he didn't complete his studies and he went to Canada and he did a lot of menial jobs until he got into acting. And then he moved to Hollywood and he did a lot of um, silent movies, but the work he got was very sporadic. So he had to do um, a lot of manual work, such as digging ditches and, and labouring work, just to, uh, to support himself. But he did eventually get some work. And one of uh, the um, movies that brought him to the attention of um, Universal and um, the producers was a movie called The Criminal Code. And he played a part in that that he'd actually done on stage. Now, uh, that movie so impressed um, the um, scouts or whoever actually found him um, that um, they snapped him up. And um, it's not surprising because that movie itself um, achieved an a Academy Award nomination. Now, we're all familiar with him in his iconic role as Frankenstein. Okay, now when you think the what he had to endure to go through that role, Dark Realm is okay. Now, um, 
he was five foot eleven, so he wasn't short by any means. But those uh, platform boots he wore uh, actually weighed eleven pound each, or five kilos each. So could you imagine how hard that was to move and walk? And of course, he had a face that was just covered in makeup, um, and it. It was just incredible when you think that. Um, and guys, if you can't remember, um, if you want to try and find out what it was like, try just remembering what it was like back in the 70s when we all wore platform shoes and we'd dance all night and then we'd feel like our legs would drop off because of the weight of those things. Try that and triple it, <laughs> okay? Now, the movie um, was, was huge. There's no doubt about that. And Universal actually um, snapped up the rights um, to uh, Jack Pierce's makeup so that they owned the copyright on that makeup. And of course, Boris Karloff went on and reprised his role in um, Bride of Frankenstein with um, Elsa Lanchester, who was actually the wife of Charles Lawton too. But he also went on and um, appeared as the monster one more time in Son of Frankenstein. Um, when you're on a good thing, milk it. Okay, but um, one of the interesting things was that, yes, we all know him as primarily a horror um, actor, and that's fine. I'm sure he doesn't mind that he's remembered that way, but he also did dramatic roles too. Now, he was in a scene in the movie Scarface where he was shot down in a bowling alley, and he also played some roles such as uh, major generals and... Um, because of his, his um, dark looks, he tended to get roles um, as, as foreign, um, uh, foreign dignitaries and so forth. But of course, the public wanted him in the horror roles. And one of his other famous roles was as Imhotep in The Mummy. And the makeup for that was just incredible, as you'll see from the photos. Now, um, Boris Karloff, um, had a huge career in in movies, but it wasn't just solo. He worked very closely for a long time with Bella Lugosi, and they teamed in a number of movies. Now he went on and made um, a number of movies with Bella Lugosi, including The Black Cat, The Gift of the Gab, The Raven, The Invisible Ray, Black Friday, You'll Find Out, and The Body Snatcher. And even though uh, these two uh, worked very closely together for a number of years. They didn't develop a very strong friendship. Um, and that was partly due to the fact, Dark Realm, is that they both worked for Universal and both were vying for the crown of the King of the Monsters, okay? And there was a third contender there, and that was um, Lon Chaney, um, who's best known as the werewolf, Larry Talbot. Okay, but um, he went on... Um, afterwards um, and made lots and lots of movies you know some drama some historical but it was always the horror and the thrillers that the public wanted now in uh, later on he went on and um, hosted a tv series called thriller which was on nbc and it ran for two seasons and that was an amazing series dark now which you can find some of the episodes here on youtube because it's really fascinating. He does a brilliant opening monologue um, and it just sets you up so much for the, um, the episode that's coming. But what's also interesting about the series is that you'll see very young performances um, by uh, a very young William Shatner. Um, oh, and, you know, um, Oh, Mrs. Howe, Mrs. Howe, that's right, yes, Natalie Schaefer from Gilligan's Island, and she's actually in the episode with um, William Shatner. So that was a great series. Now, he went on um, and, and continued acting for quite some time, and um, he received two Hollywood um, stars on the Walk of Fame, and one was for his movie uh, roles, and the other one was for television. And um, the Thriller series also led um, to have his likeness um, on the front of a, a gold key comic series called Thriller, which was stories and they were either based on the TV production 
or they were original uh, stories written for the comic. But after he passed away, they renamed it um, Boris Karloff's Vault of Mystery, and they took his likeness off the cover, but the um, image that they used was strangely um, very much like Boris Karloff. But anyway, he went on and he ended up retiring and going back to England and he um, retired to a village called Bramholt. Now, he developed um, bronchitis and um, later on he got pneumonia and um, he died. Um, and I'll just check the dates for you. Yeah, it was on the 2nd of February in 1969. So the world lost a great, great talent. Um, but luckily for us Dark Realmers, we have all his movies to enjoy. There are numerous books out there about his life, um, but not only about his life, there's some fascinating books out there, Dark Realmers, about Universal Studios, which was basically the home of horror. Um, you know, they produced Dracula, Frankenstein, the Frankenstein sequels, The Mummy, The Werewolf, um, a lot of the... Um, um, adaptations of Edgar Allan Poe, such as, you know, The Black Cat and The Raven and um, The Fall of the House of Usher and, and all those wonderful, wonderful old horror films. So I encourage you to check um, not only the movies out, Dark Realmers, but also, um, you know, the fascinating history behind the movie studios, you know, um, and Universal is, of course, one of the biggest, okay? Well, there you go, Dark Realmers. I hope you've enjoyed our first video in our series about um, the legends of horror. I hope you've learned something. Um, and if you have, if there's something you'd like to contribute, please leave a comment for us below. And don't forget to, to subscribe to us um, for more great horror content coming up very, very soon. Okay, so I'm glad you stuck with me for this episode of the Dark Realm Diaries. And as I always say, stay in the light, Dark Realmers, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.